what animal changes its venom depending on how scared it is. Here's a clue. It has eight eyes, it's armor plated, it stings, but it's not a bee. It sheds its skin, it has two claws, and it glows in the dark. So uh, we're out in the rainforest at night. Um, and what we're gonna do is go and chase some scorpions. So the first, first question I guess you ask is, why are we doing it at night? Well, if we find some, we'll show you why. Second thing is, why are we in the rainforest? Because we're after rainforest scorpions. But this is what scorpions eat. It's not a millipede, which most people think, but they run around here and this is any sort of insect or invertebrate that the scorpions can find. They'll actually grab and eat that. So this, the rainforest obviously is littered with this stuff. And these are the things that the scorpions will be looking at. So maybe we might put him on the ground and he might unroll. We'll see. Put him there. Oh, there he goes. And away he goes. Now the scorpions will be looking for that sort of thing. So they're out, these things are out at night hunting or looking for food and the scorpions are out chasing them as well. And that's what their venom's aimed at for killing those things. Oh, oh yeah. Ah, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You need to come over this side. This is cool. Just quietly. Good find, Jamie. That's Thanks, team. <laughs> I will attempt to dig him out. Whoop, there he is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Under that leaf. Now you watch, I'll take that leaf away, and there is your glow-in-the-dark scorpion. That's with a normal light, and it's hard pressed. You can sort of see him if you know where he is, but if I take that away, bright green, no UV. Bright green, no UV. Bright green, now you watch this, just so I convince you all that it is alive. neat. <laughs> uh, I think we should catch him and put him in a jar and take him back to the lab. <laughs> Look at that! Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, you see the claws there, there's actually a relationship between the size of your claws and how venomous you are. So if you have really big claws, and this guy has really big claws, he's not terribly venomous. If he had really tiny claws, he'd be really venomous. And that thought being that if you have big claws, you can tear the heads off everything. You don't need a really potent venom. That was a uh, rather successful night. So we've got a couple of scorpions. So I'll take them back to the lab now. And what we're going to do is look at their venom profiles and uh, run a couple of experiments and see what happens. So not only do we get the scorpions, but we've got to milk them, get the venom from them, and then we'll expose them to some predators and things and see what happens. Cool evening. Come on in guys, come into the lab. Come on in, we've got these scorpions that we got from last night. Rob's one of my PhD students, he's gonna give me a hand because you can't do this sort of stuff by yourself. So we got the, the two scorpions we got last night. So what we're gonna do is um, milk them. So we need to uh, extract the venom from these guys. So they're only small, but what we've got is a little machine here that basically produces electric current. We're gonna put the scorpion on here. I'm gonna hang on to it, put a little vial on its tail. Rob's gonna zap it with an electric charge. All the muscles in its tail will contract, squeeze the venom glands, and assuming we know what we're doing, we'll end up with a little bit of venom. So that's the plan. So there's our little scorpion from last night. So he's still happily running around. What we're going to do is put him down here, and then assuming the scorpion does what it's supposed to, he'll hide under the rubber band, like so. All right, so we'll spin said animal around. Right, away you go. Ready? Yep. And oh, ooh. look at that! Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Not a huge amount of venom, but that's all we need. Excellent. These scorpions have got two components to the venom. 
One of them they use for predators, in other words, making sure they don't get attacked. The other one they use for prey, so that's the one they use for catching small crickets, grasshoppers, cockroaches. Now what we want to know is if we scare this scorpion, in other words, take like a stuffed mouse and scare him over a week, will those components change or will the amounts change? That's the crux of the whole experiment. Nobody's been able to show this occurring in any other venomous animal ever. So it could be quite interesting. Okay, so we're going into the other lab. This is where we've got the equipment that um, basically tells us what's in the venom or gives rise to the venom profile. So it's called an FPLC or a fast performance liquid chromatography. And what happens is we milk the scorpions. Now we've done that for the control scorpions, which is the scorpion we caught first off. Then we scared the scorpion over four weeks by harassing it with this Franken mouse, and then we left it alone for four weeks. You take the venom, you put it through here, and what happens is it comes through this column and it's full of little tiny beads, and the different sized proteins in the venom come out at different times. In other words, the component for predator defense comes out at a different time than the one for prey. What we can do is measure the amounts and see whether they change. All done with this neat little machine that goes ping. So what did we actually find out about the venom from these little guys? Well, after scaring them silly for four weeks, the amount of venom that they used for predator defense changed, it increased. And then we stopped for four weeks and it went back down again. Now that in itself is amazing. But what is really fascinating is why it happens so quickly. Now, we know that other venomous animals can change their venom, snakes for example, but it often takes generations. And these guys are doing it within weeks. Now the other cool thing about these venoms is there's a component in it that attaches to tumour cells. And you can add a fluorescent dye to it and you can actually make cancer cells in your body fluoresce, which means you can find them for treatment. That's another story and that's the nature of science. Thank you.